Tesla has a patent, GB186083, where he does a combustion plus steam turbine all in one, where they go into the turbine in a single nozzle, or there's dual nozzles, but together the steam and combustion go together into the turbine. And any of the heat energy that's not used in the turbine for electrical energy then goes out the exhaust, and he routes the exhaust through another boiler. All of the heat energy that's left in the exhaust then goes to raise more steam that's then brought to the the combustion steam tube. By utilizing the leftover heat in the exhausts, it doesn't have to be thousands of degrees Fahrenheit or Celsius to boil and bring up really good efficiency. All it needs to do is supply the last bit of energy to go over the point of going from liquid to a vapor, where at that point you have a you can have a wet steam and you go and send it down the, the coaxial tube that the combustion and the steam is going through together, and all of the heat energy is put into the steam as they mix, and Tesla says the one of, whether one is moving faster or one is hotter, they will aspirate the other. And as they go into the turbine, they will meet, meet the same temperature, and all of the thermal energy can be utilized through expansion into the turbine. An interesting side part of that about this is in normal gas turbines, you usually shove a lot more air in with the combustion uh, stoichiometric mixture because you want to use that extra air for cooling. You don't want the parts in the system to actually overheat. What Tesla designed in GB186083 was a way to cool the combustion chamber with colder steam. It is still steam at 100 degrees Celsius, but when you've got a combustion chamber that wants to be glowing red hot, your 100 degrees Celsius steam will easily cool down that roasting hot combustion chamber and in effect dumping much of that heat into the steam. And steam is really, really good at holding in energy that's for use, utilization through expansion and heating. So he makes it so that the centrifugal compressor on the actual system that provides the the air for the combustion, it makes it so the centrifugal compressor does not need to supply all the extra air for cooling too. And that's a lot of power difference to not have to supply. When I can't off the top of my head think of the fuel mixture ratio, then I'll probably put it up here in the corner, but there's way more air than that's needed for the combustion in most gas turbines that don't utilize steam in it for cooling. What this does is then it literally utilizes the loss in the turbine or from out of the turbine into a boiler to raise the steam and then also provide steam for expansion and cooling while eliminating the need to take some energy off of what's being produced by the shaft, whether you have the compressor on shaft or you have the compressor being powered by an electric motor powered by the turbine generator. So when you eliminate the amount of a good amount of the energy needed for the compressor for combustion, you'll make your gas turbine way more efficient. Considering much of the energy from a gas turbine goes into the compression of the air that's used to be heated and then expanded through the turbine. If you don't have to compress nearly as much air for the turbine to work, and you can actually get your cooling and high pressure from not just superheating, but overheating the steam as it's entering the turbine, you're going to get a very, very efficient outcome in the turbine as well, let alone any energy that's not then used after the turbine in the boiler to raise more steam for the turbine can then still be used for heating. Because if it's at 100 degrees Celsius, or it's, it stops being able to be utilized for specifically boiling as it goes below boiling point, and while you can use some of that still for raising the temperature of boiler feed water being admitted in, you'll end up with a lot more heat that's a lot more water or exhaust that's still at about 30, 40, 50 degrees Celsius. That's very usable for heating, but you're not going to get too much more out of it with a turbine. Now, that's not to say it's not possible. I, don't, I just mean traditionally it's not used in the turbine in that way. So by utilizing this, this kind of holistic system that Tesla designed for his improvement patent on the turbine that I, everyone seems to sleep on, we're able to not just make an efficient turbine that uses combustion and steam and is not affected by the multi-fluid flow, but the loss that's not used in the turbine goes to raising more steam for the turbine to be to use with more combustion to be heated 
and anything lost from that then can still further be used for heating for a combined heat and power system that has a really, really high um, overall system efficiency. Again, you can power that solar, wood burning, fuel combustion, any, anything you can imagine that generates heat, you can utilize as the, the heating section. Um, preferably the higher the temperature, the higher the efficiency you're gonna get, but as long as you're getting a complete combustion and you're utilizing all of the, you, you're, you're, I don't wanna say it this incorrectly, but if, as long as you're entrapping all of that energy to, to the system and then utilizing it for something else somewhere else later in the system, you're going to get a good efficiency on it. And I, I, some of you might say this is cheating, but if we can eliminate heating, that's eliminate an, an energy. If I'm not paying for my heating bill, I could, I don't mind paying as much for my electricity bill, even if that's not covering it completely. If I don't have to pay for gas or natural gas, or I don't, I don't use much electric heating, but if I don't have to pay for that, that means my whole system really reduces my overall expenses on my, my heating and energy needs. And I think a lot of people forget that we don't just use electricity, we have a lot of heating energy demands that aren't being met for most people.